Hello everyone and welcome to the 2020 CW Achiever Awards and what a year it has been. Last year I stood on the stage at the beautiful Rosewood Hotel and praised the beauty industry for coming together on so many important issues. Little did we know what 2020 would have in store for us and if we thought the beauty industry was powerful then, this year it has been proven on an incredible scale. The beauty industry has been challenged, especially in the UK with extended store closures and a pause on all human touch services. And while we must absolutely respect the restrictions placed for safety, I'm so proud of the way the industry came together in order to ensure our voices were heard. The Beauty Bag campaign brought together so many brands, leaders and influencer voices and it's because of them our doors were allowed to open when they did. Our industry is worth £28 billion to the UK economy and what we offer to our consumers is so much more than just skin deep. But we must also remember the tens of thousands of women who lost their entire income when Covid hit and with over £600,000 raised by the initiative, they now have the opportunity to access financial support while our doors are once again closed. These physical store closures have resulted in the need for an immediate pivot to digital in all its forms. We have opened up the world of e-commerce and online education and are delivering it in ways that are simpler to access, easier to navigate and engaging to consume. We don't know what 2021 will have in store for us, but I think if 2020 has shown us anything, it's that as an industry we are a force to be reckoned with when we come together. When it comes to purpose and values, we must all work hand in hand. There is no place for competition when it comes to doing what is right. So now the reason we're here today acknowledging and celebrating some of the key leaders, entrepreneurs and founders for the outstanding contribution to the industry. Our lineup today is phenomenal and I'm so proud to have worked alongside one of our winners for some time now. You will see us as we go through our awards that all of our achievers have a few key attributes in common. They are passionate in doing the right thing, they boldly use their voices to influence change and they challenge beauty and the societal norm. Together, they embody everything the industry should be about and I do hope you will feel inspired after hearing them speak. This pandemic has made one thing very clear. Brands who will not only survive but thrive are the ones who continue to be a force of good for their people and their communities. We live in a world where consumer accountability is high and those who stand out will be the ones who keep their social mission at the very core of all their choices. We can offer a safe space to our communities, a place for escapism and a moment of joy when it's needed the most. So be mindful, make choices for the right reasons and stay focused on the legacy you and your brands will leave. 2020 has been a year unlike any of us have ever experienced. A year of uncertainty and challenges. A year of introspection and reflection. A year that has truly tested us in our professional as well as personal lives. The beauty industry as we know it has been turned upside down. But we have shown strength and resilience and supported one another. Adapting to find new opportunities and digital solutions like never before. In an industry where face-to-face -face contact is irreplaceable. We have found a way to communicate collaborate, and now to celebrate. Together, we are united as one community. I look forward to celebrating our achievers with you all in person next year, but until then, let's meet our first winner. This is the award for our young achiever, which this year goes to Laura Tudor, sustainable beauty entrepreneur and founder of Centered. Let's join Sarah Brown, Chair of the Young Executive Programme, in conversation with Laura. Hi, I'm Sarah Brown. I'm the founder of Pi Skin Care, and I helped set up the Young Executive Programme about four years ago now. 
I'm really delighted to be here to interview Laura, our winner today, as a fellow business owner and somebody who similarly built a business out of a problem. Laura, a very big welcome and a huge congratulations on being our 2020 Young Achiever winner. So just why don't we start off just finding out what is Centred and um, how did you start this business? Thank you so much. It's so amazing to be here. Um, so Centred is um, an award-winning range of expert hair care and nutrition products. And we combine that with straight talking and supportive advice for the stressed out hair, body and mind. And as a company, we really focus on self-care, self-love and well-being. Um, we're aiming to help you promote your hair health with, from the inside out and the outside in. So Laura, tell us how did this business come about? And I guess crucially, what were the kind of different career moves that got you to this point and how useful were those past career moves, I guess? So actually I come from a fashion background and I had a previous business which I ended up closing and then back in 2017 after closing this business, it was quite a stressful period in my life and I started to experience stress-induced hair loss. Um, and I kind of was coming home and speaking to my husband about it, who's a, a hairdresser. And, you know, we really started to look at what was the root cause to this problem. Um, at the time I was working for Mintel and I remember just sitting at my desk one day and I was just thinking like, oh my goodness, like this is exactly, it was like a light bulb moment. This is exactly where I needed to be. I need to go off and make my own. And that was kind of, that point was two years ago now, so fast forward to where we are today and we launched Centred back in February this year and even with um, the extreme curveball of Covid it's been such an amazing year and we've had some fantastic press um, which led to us launching on our green retailer on Cult Beauty about two months ago now. So, yeah. so you launched in February, interesting year to launch a new business. So what do you think have been maybe the positives out of that? Because we don't hear of that very much. So what, you know, what, yeah, what, what's, what have been the positives out of launching a year like this for you? It was definitely a very unexpected turn of events, especially launching back just before the first lockdown. Um, and it's been incredibly challenging, but actually what it really enabled us to do was really focus on our customers and hopefully provide them with that extra bit of support um, through this really difficult time. And I think as um, you know, we've all been at home so much more that I think actually our customers have really learned to look after their hair a lot more at home. Um, we've really tried to support them with that and that whether that's been kind of online tutorials or you know we've we've recorded free kind of head massage tutorials to really help provide those moments of calm and and really kind of be there for our customers a lot more so supporting their well-being but also getting them zoom ready also getting them <laughs> zoom ready from just waist high um and so what's what's coming for next year what does 2021 bring so I'm super excited for the new year, actually, as I'm sure many of us are happy to leave 2020 behind us. Um, but we have some really exciting product launches coming up, one of which I'm so excited about. We are launching our first zero waste product um, in January. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And then we're also really excited about expanding our team and hiring our full first time, full time, sorry, members of staff. You are a relative newcomer to the beauty industry, as I was when I started my business. So, you know, how has CW helped you in that regard and particularly the young executive membership? So um, coming from a fashion industry and kind of being a beauty outsider, it was just one of the first things I did was join the CW and it turned out to be the best thing by far. Um, it's just been amazing to be part of this family and you, and you can really feel that support from kind of day one. Um, I attended lots of events, so I've done lots of networking um, and actually made some great friendships from, from these events. Um, and then we've also had some mentoring events, which again have just been incredibly helpful and supportive uh, for me like, on my journey so far. Laura, thank you so much. A very well-deserved win and congrats again. Thank you so much. It's, it's such a huge honour to have been recognised for this award. So I thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Our next deserving winner is Alexia Inge, recipient of a 2020 Achiever Award. 
As co-founder and co-CEO of Cult Beauty, Alexia was singularly committed to curating a beauty hall of fame featuring only the best hero products from across the globe. Alexia has ensured Cult Beauty is the place to go for beauty discovery and incubating indie trends, from the latest scientific discoveries to centuries-old remedies that have never been bettered. Sarah Jossel hosts our interview with Alexia. Hello, I'm Sarah Jossel, Sunday Times Star Beauty Director, and it is an honor to be here to give Alexia Ng, the co-founder of Cult Beauty, her 2020 CEW Achiever Award. Alexia is an absolute gem to the beauty world. There's not a fact or a stat that she can't back up. She is my ultimate trend forecaster. I know I can call her for absolutely anything, and overall, I am proud to call Alexia a friend. It would be brilliant if you could start by just telling everyone a little bit about Cult Beauty and how you got to where you are today. Well, um, I co-founded Cult Beauty as a bit of a frustrated consumer um, with a passion for this new internet world that I was seeing developing out there. Um, and I think one of the biggest issues with the beauty industry that most people have that I speak to is an excess of choice. Um, and we really wanted to set Cult Beauty up as the answer to that problem. And the, the idea was to build a beauty hall of fame. So a filtered down site of, made of the, the best products that are out there across the world. And really with a focus on indie brands because that is my huge passion. Um, and I was originally a journalist like you, um, and um, I think we, and also we started the, the business with, with our own pennies. We didn't have funding to start off with. Um, so in order to build up these indie brands that no one had heard of, and, and also cult beauty as well as we were growing, storytelling and content was very much at the heart of everything that we do. Um, so it's really about bringing a filtered selection of amazing brands for a real site of discovery and playfulness and something that you could really enjoy just to read, to visit. You also, I mean, Cult Beauty just manages to just perfectly, perfectly cherry pick the right products. I mean, Anastasia Beverly Hills, Milk Makeup, Drunk Elephant, you just, fingers are on the pulse at all times. Yeah, it's really key to us. And I think, you know, we have a huge network all over the world where founders know that they can come to Cult Beauty because we will nurture their brand. It's not um, hit the ground, you have to make 100 million in five minutes. Uh, although, you know, not gonna turn that down. <laughs> but, um, you know, brands take a long time to percolate into people's consciousness. It doesn't just happen and it's taking longer and longer because um, you know we're so distracted all the time. It's actually, it used to be when we first st started Cult Beauty that you had to see something in three different places before you would uh, make an action. Um, and now it's probably more like 16 because you're sort of glinching it in, in, in a social media, you're reading it in the newspaper, your mates mentioned it to you, you see it on a billboard, and I know in a taxi drives past, and you're like, oh, I don't recognize that. And you know, it's all of these things, these, these stories that really make a brand come to life and, and become more relevant to you to the point where you actually want to go and um, buy it, try it. 2020 has been a massive challenge, but Cult Beauty seems to have just gone from strength to strength. What would you say your main sort of learnings and lessons that have come out of this year have been for you? I mean, I think the first um, learning that's come out of this year is, is how important the beauty industry and its services are to people. Um, there's nothing like having something taken away to make you really understand how much you need it and how much you missed it. Um, so the decision to close beauty, um, I think, has highlighted how important it is to modern life, really. Um, so Cult Beauty launched in 2008. I mean, I call it the Disney world for beauty enthusiasts. It's just like, you're basically just on this like amazing roller coaster, like discovering new brands, trying new things. It's sort of the go-to destination for 
I mean, I say beauty lovers, but even if you're sort of just sort of dipping your toes into beauty, I find it a very accessible, relatable um, platform to be on. What would you say um, has been your biggest career highlights? It's a, it's a really difficult question to answer as an entrepreneur because you're kind of driven by the, the small wins that happen every day and I think if you're not driven by that you, you really do give up quite early because it's actually that's what propels you through. Um, but thinking about this as an overview, I think the biggest achievement um, that I look to is, is building the cult beauty team as they stand. The team have been utterly amazing and I'm so proud of them and that's that's the point that I look at and just get uh, really a bit overexcited and tearful. <laughs> so I want to come and give you a hug. <laughs> can I? Can I? <laughs> Not yet. In a month maybe. Okay. And how do you feel about winning the 2020 CEW Achiever Award? Well in the beauty industry it, it doesn't get any better really so um, absolutely blown away and incredibly excited so I'm really really happy. Congratulations! Thank you! <laughs> <laughs>2020 has been a year like no other. We have been supporting global and national efforts to help tackle the spread of COVID-19. Our factory workers have been delivering essential products throughout the pandemic with the highest safety requirements. Even adapting our manufacturing lines at our deodorants factory in Leeds to produce much needed supplies of hand sanitizer. And we are making a positive impact for our brands, including relaunching Lifebuoy in the UK to make hygiene products accessible, Shaw inspiring people to move more at home, Dove's Courage is Beautiful campaign, Vaseline support for frontline workers, and many, many more. Congratulations to all the winners of the Achievers Awards. Your contribution to the beauty industry has been incredible. Moving into our next Achiever, we're delighted to be honoring Dr. Atech Jewel. Atech is a multi-award winning journalist, producer, director, influencer, and diversity advocate. Adek has been in the industry for 19 years, specializing in beauty, social commentary, and campaigning for more diversity in the beauty industry. Adek also runs a digital production company with her husband, and they have worked with an extensive list of global commercial clients in the industry. Laura Hinton went to meet Adek at her Cotswolds home. Hello, my name is Laura Hinton. I'm the founder of Little Light PR. I'm here on a slightly rainy day in the Cotswolds to congratulate my very good friend, Dr. Ate Jewell, on winning the CEW Achiever Award 2020. Ate and I have really grown up in the beauty industry together. Over the last 20 years, she has been an amazingly supportive friend. Um, she's full of warmth and full of light. And she is that friend who will tell you the truth even when you don't want to necessarily hear it. And um, that kind of truth telling aspect of Ate, she's really brought into her work. And she's always been a champion of the beauty industry and in everything she's done. But also sometimes when we need to hear a hard truth, she will tell us like it is. So without further ado, I'm going to go and have a knock on her door and give her the good news. lovely to see you here. Lovely yeah, to see you too. It's such a beautiful November morning. Oh my god, misty and mystical, <laughs> just the way I love it. The whole thing. <laughs> School run done? School run done. I've been up for like half a day already. You know how it is. <laughs> me too, me too. So what we're really here to talk about. Yes. Your CW Achiever Award win. I am beyond thrilled and proud and it's an incredible thing to be honoured in this way by our industry which I'm just so in love with. I love the beauty industry. I've spent 20 years championing diversity and inclusion and to be honoured in this way is just incredible. I really appreciate it. 
So, shall we start at the beginning? Tell yes. us how it all began. So, you know, I've been in the industry 19 years. At the same time, we grew up together in the beauty industry. Um, I started at InStyle, then I went to Tatler. I was freelance by the time I was about 23, and I've written for basically everybody. Um, Sunday Time Style, Daily Mail, Telegraph, Guardian Observer, um, Men's Health, Women's Health, Wonderland. Um, you know, and I really made a huge point of writing for left, right, men, women, arty, popular, because it's about beauty for everybody and beauty equality. That's really important to me. And this year has probably really shown that more than any other year, because obviously you're with Marie Claire now, yes. but also you've been doing so much on kind of diversity campaigning for 2020 after BLM. Definitely. I'm so proud to be a Marie Claire columnist. Um, it is a beautiful thing at my beauty prism. And it's really, this year has been just so strange and, you know, destructive, but at the same time, illuminating. Um, Black Lives Matters has been huge for shaking, and COVID-19, I would say, for showing us what really matters, the fractions in our society, social, in, you know, inequality, and what I've been sort of shouting about for the past 20 years, which is, you know, more diversity means more people are invited to come and play at the party because beauty is about being welcome, loving yourself, self-esteem and celebrating. So 2020 has been a wild year, <laughs> but it has also been a year of illumination. And I know now you're also um, on television too. Yes, I've been like um, on This Morning and Good Morning Britain. And I'm, you know, I'm just living my best life, Laura. It's I'm just... <laughs> doing what I love, which is communicating and talking. I also started my Wednesday chat club in lockdown. You know, I always felt on the outside looking in with this industry, if I'm gonna be totally honest. And lockdown made me feel, if I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go down swinging in red lipstick and do me. <laughs> and it's been really very liberating and wonderful to communicate with everybody. And I think that's what this time has shown us, that we need each other. We have, you know, and we are a beauty community. And when we come together, we can do amazing things. So I know you're a great beauty commentator. Have you noticed anything that's changed in this Zoom era of online conversation and connection? It's been quite incredible that we really appreciate I think people appreciate what beauty does for them. I've always seen beauty as being from the inside out. You glow from the inside. You know, putting on makeup, skincare, it's nothing to do with other people. It's all about your self-esteem. And when that was taken away from us, and you know, you saw people's roots and you saw, <laughs> you know, you, you saw it all hanging out on Zoom. It was really something I think people appreciated. So what's next for Dr. Ate Jewel? Oh, the future is very exciting. I'm writing a book called Coils and Curls, The Ultimate Guide to Loving Your Hair. Um, I've been doing lots of collaborations with amazing big brands like Space and Gay with my glow box, but also smaller artisan brands such as Rosings London with my hairband collaboration because it's about big and small businesses. We all are in it together. Also, I'm launching the Dr. Ate Jewel Education Fund. For me, education is everything. Education, education, education. It's how we're going to get more black students into the seats of power and make real change because it's the people who are signing the checks and making, signing off marketing campaigns. That's how we're going to change things. And also my makeup line, which I'm just so thrilled about. I'm creating a line of foundations for darker skin tones and blushes and lip balms. It's just going to, I want to be the change. I'm going to be the solution. So I'm making my own. So I'm very, very proud. Amazing. So how do you feel about receiving this year's CEW Achiever Award? I am just flabbergasted. I'm <laughs> overwhelmed. I'm really proud. CEW is at the heart of our industry and to be honoured in this way is just incredible. I'm so thankful and grateful. I feel a big warm cosy hug from the industry and I really appreciate it. It's amazing. Thank you. I now have the great pleasure to announce the winner of the Special Industry Award, which this year goes to someone I know very well and have worked with for many years, Alan Job, CEO of Unilever. Alan was appointed CEO in January 2019 and is responsible for leading one of the world's largest and most geographically diverse consumer goods businesses with presence in 190 countries. 
Since joining Unilever in the UK in 1985, he has served as president of Unilever's beauty and personal care division and has worked in leadership roles in North America and Asia. When leading Unilever's business in China, Alan doubled its size and laid important foundations for future success. Alan is a vice chair of the WBCSD Executive Committee, a member of the World Economic Forum's International Business Council, and on the board of directors of the Consumer Goods Forum and FCLT Global. Ashley Goldie led our interview with Alan to get his reaction. Hi, I'm Ashley Goldie, Brand Acceleration Manager for the Unilever Beauty and Personal Care team. I'm delighted today to award this year's winner of the CEW Special Industry Award to Unilever CEO, Alan Joe. Hi, Alan. Hi, Ashley, and thank you very much. It's a surprise and a huge honor. Thank you. Firstly, congratulations on your CEW Special Industry Award in recognition for, of your action to accelerating climate change, sustainability and equality with, within and outside of Unilever. You're clearly making an impact despite being CEO for only one year. I have heard you say you're a rookie at this. Can you tell us a little bit about your Unilever journey so far? Yeah, it's a pretty simple story, uh, Ash. I joined the company in 1985. Uh, I've spent eight years working in the UK. I've spent 14 years working in the United States and 13 years in Asia. I became chief exec last year, as you said. And prior to that, I was running our global beauty and personal care division. So that's the story, really. And, and I guess within that time, Alan, being where we are today, you could never have underestimated leading the company of 150,000 employees within the COVID crisis that we've seen in, in 2020. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, um, I should say that COVID is a terrible tragedy and the impact that it's had on lives and livelihoods has not spared Unilever. We have mem lost members of our team around the world. But our response was shaped by the long-standing commitment that Unilever has to a multi-stakeholder business model. And what we mean by that simply is a deep belief that if we take good care of the Unilever team, take care of our customers, our business partners, the societies that we do business in and the planet, then our shareholder will be well rewarded as a consequence. And so our first reflex when COVID struck has really been to take good care of uh, ourselves, the Unilever team and the communities that we do business in. And I think, Alan, we've definitely heard your voice as a leader in, in taking care of, of your people. So we thank you for that. This year has also really reinforced the threat of, of climate change and inequality. What are we doing at Unilever about it? You know, it is uh, easy for us to become preoccupied with COVID, but the two great challenges of our times are climate change and inequality. And despite everything that's going on this year, we've kept up our commitments in that space. So we announced big new moves that the company is making on climate and nature to introduce regenerative agriculture practices, to make sure that uh, we're part of the solution, not part of the problem. We've introduced uh, programs to take care of water, of waste, uh, reducing our plastic footprint. And as far as inequalities are concerned, we really are focused on four areas. Continuing our work on gender equity, ensuring that the LGBTQI community have a voice and a place within Unilever, making sure that we're creating opportunity for people with disabilities. And I think this year has been a slap in the face to make sure that we're doing enough to drive racial equity in our company and with our brand. Yeah, we've definitely seen movement being a marketeer in, in beauty and personal care on our brands. And I think it's something to be really proud of as we move forward and, and continue that work to have that voice. To finish, Alan, we'd like to have a quick fire round of questions. Are you ready? Yes. How do you feel about receiving this year's CEW Special Industry Award? Uh, truthfully, completely undeserving. We'll let you off with that one. 
What is your favorite beauty or personal care product? I think it has to be the Dove Bar. It's a miracle product. It's genuinely superior and it does what it says it does. And to finish on a positive note, Alan, what are your hopes for 2021? Well, my main hope is that 2021 sees a lot less loss of life and loss of livelihoods from COVID. But I also hope that there's an outbreak of kindness and compassion around the world because we really need it. Thanks, Alan. That is certainly the positive note that we need to finish on. Congratulations again. It's been a delight to speak to you today. Well, I must say I'm absolutely thrilled to receive this award. Thank you very much indeed. It's much appreciated. All the best. We now return to our next Achiever Award recipient, Funmi Feto. Funmi is a contributing editor at British Vogue, beauty director and columnist at the Observer newspaper, author of Palette, the beauty bible for women of color and founder of the On Reflection Beauty podcast. In her 20 years experience as a fashion and beauty journalist, she has written and worked for many publications and now consults for a plethora of global beauty brands. Jess Steiner went along to meet with Funmi. Hi, I'm Jess, I'm Beauty Director at British Vogue and I'm so thrilled to be here today to present my fabulous friend Funmi Feto with her CEW Achiever Award for 2020. Um, for me, or it actually feels too formal to call you for me because I, I feel like I only ever call you FF. FF. Yeah, um, FF. Obviously, you've won this amazing award for all your achievements in the beauty industry. Obviously, you and I know each other super well, but let's just roll it back. How have you got to where you are today? Oh, goodness let's me. Try. I mean, I actually started in fashion, as you know. Well. <laughs> You says she, the queen of dresses. <laughs> um, I started in fashion and yeah, I mean, getting into beauty actually was was kind of accidental. I think I'd worked in fashion for quite a while. I worked for lots of different publications and then I went freelance. And I think, you know, when you go freelance, you turn your hand to so many different things. Yeah. And I started writing about beauty because, well, it was something, another thing to do but it was also because I wanted to see myself reflected in those beauty pages. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, and that's, gosh, I can't even remember how many, how many years now that I've solely focused on beauty, but that's essentially how, that's in a nutshell, that's kind of yeah. how I got here. And it's just yeah, affair yeah, affair. yeah, completely. And also beauty became much more interesting than fashion in many ways. I mean, I still love fashion and I still follow the industry, yeah. but it's been so exciting recently, right? Like yeah. all the different brands that have launched and the different sort of things happening in that space. And you know, you know, from your time as well, that in many ways, beauty was seen as the kind of, you know, the poor cousin. The sort of lesser cousin. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, to budgets, fashion. Yeah, exactly. Pages, exactly. But then actually, as time's gone on, yeah. it's kind of increased in relevance. Completely. And like, we're so much more progressive than, you know, than fashion in many ways. So yeah. it's just become a much more kind of dynamic and exciting industry yeah. to work in. And, you know, I think one of the most amazing things about your voice specifically is your authority and the way that you speak your truth and your honesty and specifically, you know, with everything that's happened this year with the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I feel like you have been such a sort of light and source of truth um, in your writing, but also, you know, what you've been doing behind the scenes with brands or even, you know, championing us as a team, advising us as a team. Um, you know, how have you felt your voice has been important, obviously always, but specifically this year? Gosh, you know, um, I know it's a big question. Yeah, it's such a big question. I think black people wanted to feel really seen this year. You know, we've always wanted to be seen, but I think so much more this year in all the spaces. And I think, you know, it wasn't just me, but you know, there are other black journalists, other people that had platforms that really needed to use their voices to to highlight the issues um, you know all the sort of um, issues of inequality and so on that are taking place in so many different aspects of our society and it was really important for me to use my voice and my platform to highlight that um, that was incredibly incredibly important and 
you know, I don't sort of overstate my sort of, you know, my power to influence, but whatever little I could do, however I could use my voice, I wanted to use it. I think one of the positive things that have come out of the movement is that people then felt much more freedom to speak. Yeah. And that has been, I've always been so um, keen for the voices of people to be heard, mm. you know. And elevated. And elevated amplified. and amplified. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's so, so crucial and it's so important. So the freedom to speak was in its element in 2020 where you felt that you could speak without repercussions yeah. um, because for such a long time people have been keeping silent and we are silent no more and that's a good thing yeah. so i was i felt really proud that i was able to use my voice and my platform to be able to galvanize conversations around all of those issues especially within the beauty industry yeah. definitely and obviously with everything changing this year, we've had to adapt how we do events. Yeah. Um, have you been, have you? <laughs> you know, and I know what the, I'm thinking yeah, about. Yeah, the tech elements the tech. have been quite a learning. Yeah. Have you enjoyed evolving with us as we've changed all these ways that we do events and doing our online webinars, you I've know? I've loved it. Yeah, I've it's been great, it. hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's been amazing. I think that we've grown as a family in yeah. many ways. You yeah. Know, we've almost become, because there's not been the, um, we haven't really had the forum to sort of connect in person. Yeah. So we've been having to do it through tech. And, yeah. But that's been amazing. And we've been able to see each other, no makeup, pyjamas, yeah. you know, all of that. <laughs> and it's felt really real. And I've, I've loved that. So that's been amazing. Yeah. And I think it's definitely evolved how we all connect with one another mm -hmm. and having to find these other ways, like you're saying, to connect digitally, um, but also just with our readers as mm -hmm. well. Because normally mm -hmm. we do these events and they're in person and it's an amazing way to meet. Um, and interact with our audience, but having to evolve it has definitely been a learning, but I've, I've loved it. And I think actually there'll be things that we take away from it oh, completely. and that we will continue and maybe we will always have a digital element to so. our events in the future. It's but been I so think successful it's, yeah. and people love it. Yeah. And we've loved it, so yeah. it'd be amazing. Definitely. Yeah. So 2020, mm. quite the wild ride yeah. on many levels. Yeah. Um, any like key learnings, key takeaways, silver linings? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things with 2020 is that I think a lot of people will say it's taught us to really appreciate what we have mm. and be really grateful for what we have because I think there was so much that we took for granted yeah. in many ways, whether it's, you know, the, just the social interaction or maybe family or just that you know, our liberty, our freedom, yeah. you know, we took so much for granted. Yeah. And I think now you kind of realize that actually all of those small things really are quite significant. And, totally. you know, and yes, you know, it has been difficult and so on, but I've got this kind of mental hashtag called finding the joy where, you know, I try and find joy in like really mundane things, yeah. you know, like just really, really basic things, you mm. know, whether it's, you know, listening to a song that you haven't listened to for ages and dancing around the kitchen and getting ridiculous looks from your husband or whatever, <laughs> you know, um, or just reading a book or just lying in the bath or whatever yeah. it is that mm. just finding the joy in what has been like a really, really tough year for yeah. everyone, you know, but you know, you do have to, you do have to try and take the good out of it. So let's talk about the fact that you have won this fabulous mm. award. Congratulations. I mean, when you, you emailed me and told me, I was like, yes, so well deserved. Um, how does it feel to be an award winner? I know, you, I mean, you know you're an award winner already. You're so lovely. You know, it's, it's, it. um, it's quite, um, it's quite a strange thing because I was saying that I can't remember the last time I won stuff. I don't win stuff off. <laughs> I've actually never won anything. I'm I, I don't say. think I've won anything. <laughs> so I think I was saying that the last time I remember winning something was for long jump at school, like on oh sports day. I That's it. When you said that, we were like, like sorry, what? what? <laughs> long jump. <laughs> That was it, you just know. The fact, just the image of you doing <laughs> long jump. <laughs> yeah, not now. Not with his body. Not now. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so that's quite. That was quite strange. But I, you know, it's an honour mm. to be recognised um, for your work. 
But at the same time, you know, it's one of those things where um, I, I, I don't think I'll get to any point where I think, oh, I've arrived. Mm. It's that it's just not the way my brain works. Yeah. So FF, congratulations on your CW Achiever Award 2020. One of the good things to come out of 2020. I'm so, so thrilled for you. Thank you so much. It means so much for you to be doing this. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Socially distanced embrace. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>and we're incredibly proud to be supporting the CEW during these unprecedented times. From everyone here at Very, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. My darling, even though it's like I feel we have a sort of clear thing and we're just, you know, yeah. mime artists yeah. like this, two metres apart, this lovely lady is saying two metres apart, two metres yeah. apart. Okay, yes. So Trini, if you were at a dinner, yeah. how would you describe Trini London? Oh, all right. Let me tell you about Trini London. It's a brand for all women, regardless of age. Mm. It's a brand that's about the woman, less than about the brand. And it delivers portable, stackable makeup that's unbelievably easy to apply in just a few seconds. And it's personalized to you. You're a woman that knows your brand. Yeah, it's personalized to you. <laughs> Look at your skin, hair, and eyes. We tell you what you suit. Mm. Amazing achievement, and very personal for us as well. It's a little personal. tear actually to my eye. Actually. Oh, darling! Because I saw you right at the beginning uh, when you had a blank sheet of paper. And you knew so much about women. You'd had, you'd made over three thousand women, wasn't it, at the time? Three thousand women. I wonder how probably. many women you've you made over now. God oh, knows. God maybe knows. Maybe, maybe five thousand women. I would yeah. say by now. Yeah. Well, I am um, that old. But I do. <laughs> I mean, I remember you as being the first woman who I called because I thought I know what I want to do, but I don't know how to get there. And you opened up your knowledge book of like, maybe look at, you know, formulator, look at this kind of stuff, and you want to get it manufactured, so you've got to look at these kind of things. And you taught me a language, Jane. No, you can call it back end, it's <laughs> a real thing. But you gave me, you know, it's like, you know when you're like in the dark and you just want somebody to open the door and just, and you go, okay, yeah. now I can see in the dark. Yeah. And before then I couldn't, I knew what I wanted. And then, and then you showed your face and you were oh. also one of my investors. I mean, that's so like true face. And it was a real pleasure as well. Um, and you've done such an amazing journey on it. So let's talk about the journey of the investors because um, it's very hard for a lot of women to raise yeah. cash. And it was hard for us as well, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, it's around. hard to raise cash, full it stop. Is, full okay, stop, it is yeah. hard to raise cash, full stop. Because I think whether I was a man or woman going to the 20 VCs I went to before I got funding, um, it could be you're just in the wrong flow of where VCs think their their magic moment is to invest so you know at the time there was probably a fashion for you know more kind of fintech and not getting their heads around personalization unless it was gamification so you know they said oh why don't you just take the personalization element of trini london and then you take those products and you sell them in a shop mm. and that that's that's good and i was like but the whole point is together and it was getting somebody to see, actually, I get why together it's so important and why maybe what out there is what you want to do something more than, than what is out there. So, so the things I remember the most is <laughs> just going into a meeting with you and you had this sign for body language and you said to me, you know, we came out the meeting, you went, Trini, none of those people are going to invest. And I went, how do you know? Because I thought I'd done such a good pitch. And you went, because their body language, like they were like oh. this. I mean, you can only see waist up, but it was like, the men were like this. I've got all the bananas. Like that. Yeah. I've got that's your thing. I've got all the bananas. And then this one woman, Camilla, was like that. And do you remember what she said to you? Very sweet. 
she, she, she said, I've got £1,500 and I want to give it to you. Yeah. Because she really got it. Yeah, she got it. She's she going to do very well. The woman in the room who got it. Yeah. So in terms of the woman that really subscribes to Trini London and to you, mm. um, in terms of persona, she's really that lost and found woman who's maybe got divorced or gone through a life change. And I'm sure through lockdown, you got some women out of bed. Yeah, I think we did get some women out of bed during lockdown. And I think there was also, you know, it reinforced my um, excitement that we had decided from, you know, after me looking for about a few months that I actually wanted to be a DTC brand. Mm. You know, that I loved what you could do. I loved that you could not, I think it, what it was as well, Jane, it was I wanted to keep the sense of what I wanted that brand to be for a woman without any dilution. You know, any dilution through selling it through a third party, through selling it through a third party online, through selling it. And you've been quite it. fascidious about that. I've been very you? fascidious. And even when we've had our few little stores that we have, like three locations, I'm kind of a tick I go there every Saturday and I check, you know, and I on one of the stores. Yeah. But I just, I, I need that experience. And online, you can 100% control that experience for a woman of what she sees from the beginning to the end. And for me, inclusivity is a given, but inclusivity on rosacea and freckles and spots and everything that we all have that's always covered up beautifully in final beauty. I kind of want to go, hey, when I'm, you know, so many of our customers have rosacea or have something and they say, will I be able to, how will I look with this on? And I want to say, look, here's a hundred women yeah. that have every single different thing in the sun, and you could be any of those women. Right. So I just think that's very important. A couple of years ago, we challenged each other to take a carry-on yeah. uh, to Japan, and we phoned each other the night before, and so we failed. But if you had to do it, which I know you have done, yeah. to go to Utah since, um, what six products would you take, and why? Okay. I'll take BFF SPF 30 mm -hmm. because it will give me a great complexion and especially getting off the plane, you look fantastic. Mm -hmm. It decants into a teapot. So I don't take the whole tube with me. I'm only going away for a bit, so that's one of the pots. The next pot is a lip to cheek because I can put it anywhere. I'll take VB, which is a color I can also put on my eyes. Then I take Sheer Shimmer in Dido because I can put that on a lip and a cheek. Mm -hmm. And it can be a highlighter and a blusher all in one as well as the lip. And I also can put it on the eyes. Wow. I then take Miracle Blur, which we sell one every 30 seconds, and it will diffuse the lines and just soften everything. Um, I would probably take Golden Glow because we finally got a colour that is just the softest yeah. colour because I had a bad relationship with Fake Tan and this is like the softest wash of a little bit of colour. How many are I at? Five. Six, I've got so many options now, but I would do an eye. And I think I would do Empress, which is a sort of lovely bronzy brownie, which makes a blue eye pop. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. So post-Covid, mm. a lot of brands have done um, very badly and mm. had a rocky road, yeah. which is very sad to yeah. see anybody. Yeah. You have done enormously well. So how you, what, what do you see for Trini going forward? We've had four times growth every year since we started three years ago. And I wouldn't expect that to stop because as long as we stick to the principle that we deliver products women need in a personalized way to new territories as we grow, we grow to, we sell to 56, 60 countries ship to us, but we'll be actually going to some territories as well. So I see territory growth and I see product expansion and I won't say any more. Fantastic, can't wait to see what's coming out. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank well, thank you so much, Trini, and congratulations. I wish I could give you a COVID hug. Yeah. Um, but we will do we when it's so legal. We will, my God. In the meantime, <laughs> and thank you very much to CW for my award. It's really like, it's rare. And also I think when, I just want to quickly say, when I was, you know, I've been in my own, on my own in a room a lot during the day. And when I had, I was getting this, I felt a part of a community again. Yeah. You know, I, I create a community and we have an amazing community at Trinity London, but I felt that feeling of, yeah. You know, there was that acknowledgement from your peers, which it's is... Women supporting women. Women supporting women, which yeah. is what we're all about. And I, yeah. so I, I felt so chuffed. I was like... Yeah. yeah. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Jane, for being there in person to present Trini with her Achiever Award. What an amazing journey. I'm now delighted to, on behalf of Google and CEW, to award Trini London with the 2020 Digital Innovation Award. In our seventh year of sponsoring the award, 2020 felt timely to evolve this to the Digital Innovation Award, enabling us to recognise brands who have successfully pivoted their approach 
to adopting the best use of digital and technology to thrive in today's current and unique climate. 2020 has reminded us that consumers are the driving force for beauty trends. Being reactive and responding to demand will be key as our lifestyles remain unpredictable into 2021. Trini London successfully responded to this demand as we entered lockdown by further leveraging their technology to launch virtual appointments. We were impressed by their digital match to me application for personalized product recommendations and the seamless integration of the brand across all digital channels. A big thank you to this year's judges, Fiona Blow Limited, Severio at Atelier and Avenue and Savannah at Google. On behalf of all of us, congratulations to Trini London. I'm now delighted to hand over to Trini and her team. Thank you, Jackie at Google and CEW for this award. It means the world and this double win is incredible. Um, the first win for the Achiever Award was just wonderful and I felt very touched, but I was thinking my team makes me look good. And this is an award for Trini London that I'm really accepting on behalf of the whole team because you know we've over the last three years grown from three people around a little desk to over a hundred. And there are, you know, we started with interns and then slowly we built in a kind of more grown up team around those people. But those interns really are the heart of the business. And once we were ready, we then got in an amazing um, management team. And I just want to say Mark McGuinness-Smith, who's my COO, is like the rock by my side and we are like yin and yang. And that's what makes for a great company. Shira, our CMO, who just has the most driving force and, and is a force to be reckoned with. Claire, our head of MPD and innovation is just the best and puts up with a lot. Um, Tahir, who's our strategic CMO, and Jay, who is the head of development. Um, and this team really leads unbelievable um, team members of Trinity London. So I think it would be the best thing that I could bring them all in so they too can receive this win, which is so well-deserved of all of them. we've achieved as a team. I mean, there's yeah. a lot more people joining now and I think, I don't know if everyone just wants to say hi. Um, we've got Dido in the middle who runs our PR and Lucy who runs social media and I'm trying to see who else is there, but people who have Tiffany who joined us late, a little bit later and Valerie, um, but just this is a, this is a, a snapshot of Trini London as a team and we are now, how many people, Mark? We've, we've passed a hundred. So um, yeah, we're now a hundred people. Great. So our biggest challenge, I think, is that when we are moving back into the office, we need to find a new office. So that's a great challenge to have. Um, but I want to thank you all for joining today because this is an award for Trini London and um, it's so incredibly well deserved by the team. Yeah, well done. Congratulations. Thank you, Google. Thank you, CW. Our last award is the Lifetime Achiever Award, and this year our worthy recipient is Elizabeth Hurley, Global Ambassador of the Estee Lauder Company's Breast Cancer Campaign. In addition to serving as the Global Ambassador for the Estee Lauder Company's Breast Cancer Campaign, Elizabeth Hurley is an actor, model, swimwear designer, farmer and mother. Since signing as an Estee Lauder spokesmodel in 1995, she has embodied the late Evelyn H. Lauder's passion for spreading awareness by speaking openly about breast health and raising funds globally to find a cure. Edwina Inks Chambers joined Elizabeth to discuss her important work, her career and what this award means to her. Hello, Elizabeth. It's lovely to see you and huge congratulations on your big win this evening. Can you tell me what it means to you to be this year's CEW Lifetime Achiever Award winner? Well, I feel incredibly honoured to have been given this award. Um, for 25 years, I've been raising funds and awareness for the Estee Lauder Company's breast cancer campaign. And this award just it means a huge amount. And I know that if the late Evelyn Lauder was still here, she would be absolutely thrilled on my behalf. She loved her 
breast cancer campaign and she loved the beauty industry. So to link them both together really means a huge amount. As you say, you've been the Essay Lauder Company's Breast Cancer Awareness Ambassador, Global Ambassador, no less, for 25 years. And in that time, I believe you've raised over 99 million US dollars which is an amazing achievement. But what are you most proud of with your affiliation with this project? Well, you know, over the years, we've hit so many milestones, all of which have been so important for the way the world thinks about breast cancer, really. 25 years ago when I started, um, the nobody spoke about breast cancer and that's the reason i joined the campaign because it's exactly what evelyn said to me 25 years ago she said women are dying all over the world and no one is talking about it and that is what this campaign is going to change and we're going to fund research until there's a cure so her dream was for a breast cancer free world and in those 25 years so many steps have been taken along the way to help us achieve that Diagnosis is better, treatments are better, prevention me um, measures are better. There's been so much improvement, but also just the awareness about breast cancer. But even last week, somebody who we have mutual friends in common, she posted on Instagram. I saw Elizabeth Hurley with her breast cancer campaign telling women to get a mammogram and to self-examine. So she said, uh, she's just in her late 40s, this friend. And she said, so I saw her on Instagram talking about that. In the bath that night, I gave myself a self-examine and I found something. Wow. And this was only last month. And she went to her doctor and she, they, she had a tumor, which she found herself just from watching the video that we've recorded. And that to me is one of the best achievements we can ever, ever have. You know, if we can just save one person's life, it's worth it. And if we can save everybody from dying one day from breast cancer, it's worth it. Absolutely. And there's a very personal story really behind your involvement, your decision to really get behind this campaign, isn't there? Well, there is, because when Evelyn asked me to join her campaign, I just lost my grandmother to breast cancer. And she was exactly the sort of person that Evelyn referenced when she was someone who was scared of her diagnosis. Well, actually, she was scared to even get her diagnosis. She found a lump. And unlike my friend from last month, who ran to the doctor, she sat on it for over a year because she was scared and she was embarrassed and nobody talked about their breasts. So, you know, to me, those were like the dark ages of breast cancer and her cancer had progressed too much and they couldn't save her. But, you know, with my friend last week, her cancer was tiny when they found it. And um, there's, there's an extremely good chance that she'll have a full recovery. You know, there's a 95% chance of a full recovery if a breast cancer is found early and is still localised. And that's why the message of early detection is still so vital. Yeah, so important to get it out there. And isn't that an amazing change from your grandmother feeling too embarrassed to talk about it to, I believe you, you hosted the largest live self-breast check um, just the other week. We did. For October 2020 Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the um, Esther Lauder UK and Ireland did host this unbelievable event where this wonderful doctor, a national health doctor, Dr. Zoe, she um, did a live demonstration and, you know, thousands and thousands of women all joined in and checked their own breasts. And I have to say that it's, it's a reminder for everybody. You know, I talk about breast cancer all year round to many, many people. But like everyone, I still need to be reminded to continually to self-check at least once a month. And Dr. Zoe showed us how to do it beautifully. You've got so many business heads, campaigner, actor, designer, farmer. Which of those do you love the most? And which are you most surprised to have found yourself doing? Well, obviously everyone's surprised that I do farming. I mean, that goes without saying. And, you know, I love being in the country. And during lockdown, I really realized how much I could actually be a full-time gardener and really enjoy myself. So that was a nice bit of self-realization. Um, I like doing all of it, but I, I think probably the um, being involved with the breast cancer campaign through my Esther Lauder connection has probably ended up being the most meaningful thing that I've done really in my whole life because I've just met phenomenal people through this campaign. And, you know, as I said before, it, it's just so humbling on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, that seems like a good place to 
end this conversation, I think. Elizabeth Hurley, congratulations again on winning the CUW Lifetime Achiever Award this year. And good luck with your continued success with your Estee Lauder Company's breast cancer campaigning. Well, thank you very much. And once again, this is a huge honor. A huge congratulations to all of our achievers. It has been a pleasure to be here today to introduce them to you. And I do hope to be able to see many of you again very soon. I'm now going to hand over to Sally Berkery, Managing Director of CW, to close the awards. The Achiever Awards is an essential part of CEW's mission to recognise exceptional talent and contributions to our wonderful industry. And today's award winners are an inspiration to us all. Congratulations to all of this year's recipients. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our loyal sponsors. Our headline sponsor Unilever, Very, Google, Lansec, Baylor Klein and the London College of Beauty Therapy along with all of the partners who have supported the Memento brochure, which you will receive with your luxury beauty bag containing some very special products, all packed and sent by our partners at Birchbox and ILG. A big thank you to all of those who have helped us to bring this virtual event to life this year in what have been very challenging circumstances, to Blue Dog, Epic Print, Dukes London, and our designers at AV Creative Inc. Thank you also to our chairwoman and host for today, Vasiliki Petru. And last but not least, thank you to the team at CEW who have worked so hard this year in bringing this special event to life. We hope to be able to celebrate all of our winners in person at a drinks reception in late spring and do hope that you will be able to join us for that. A little bit of housekeeping, entries for our 16th CEW Beauty Awards are now open and the product demonstration evening will be taking place towards the end of May with the winner's announcement lunch planned for September. This year's awards were our biggest to date and we look forward to welcoming you and your teams next year. Finally, I would like to thank all of you for joining us today and for your continued support of CEW. I hope that you have a wonderful holiday season and a prosperous and healthy 2021. What I love about being part of the beauty industry is that we are full of mavericks, artists, creatives, and I just love to be able to come to work and play all day. My nine-year-old twin says that mummy finger paints on her face as a living, and I'm very proud that I do that. It's been so amazing to be part of the beauty industry. Um, I really felt this really strong sense of community, and everyone's been so supportive on my journey so far. So I feel humbled to have been um, chosen to receive this award, very honoured, because I know there's an awful lot of people out there doing good work, so I feel honoured and I feel inspired. Acknowledgement, um, time to pause and see what I've achieved, because I don't like to, um, and recognition by my peers. I want to see the beauty industry thrive in. I want, it to, I want to see the beauty industry open and I want to see it thrive in again. Well, my main hope is that 2021 sees a lot less loss of life and loss of livelihoods from COVID, but I also hope that there's an outbreak of kindness and compassion around the world because we really need it. I hope that we can get back to normal human interactions again as soon as possible so I can hug everybody. <laughs>